Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be together in the spirit. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, believe it or not, this is the week for the community um, Thanksgiving service, which is on Tuesday evening at Marple Christian Church, which is right next door to the Massey House. The flyer says that Rabbi Janine is preaching from Timber Bethel, but unfortunately, um, Rabbi Janine and her husband uh, have COVID now. So instead, actually, uh, Nancy Holt Wolf is going to be preaching, who's well known to many people here. So plan on being a part of that. Uh, it's always a wonderful service. If you feel so inclined, bring new hats, gloves, or scarves that will go to people that are living in the homeless shelters through Community Action Agency. And then the offering that night goes to provide Thanksgiving dinner to uh, the people that are staying in all of the housing through Community Action Agency in Delaware County, so Life Center, Family Management Center, and Wesley House. Then also, if you look in the back of the bulletin, we've got information about Breakfast with Santa, which will be here before we know it. And we certainly need volunteers to help make that uh, good. And then also just spreading the word to invite people with kids to come. And also in the back, there's just a save the date. We'll have more information soon about uh, John Eamon, who's done many wonderful things for us, is going to come lead another photography talk, uh, this time on kind of the devotional practice of photography in sacred space. But also, I'll talk a little bit about why Presbyterian worship space looks the way it looks. And Pastor Kayla from the Lutherans down the road will talk about why their church looks different than ours and what the re me meaning behind that is. And then we'll have some opportunity to take pictures and then share them with each other. Uh, John has asked for an RSVP, so if I can kind of get some sense of who's planning to come to that before it happens, I would appreciate it. And then Colin is going to share with us a little bit this morning. So come on up where they can hear you at the mic. Good morning. Um, I'm Colin Eccles, if you don't know me. My mom's Amy Eccles. Um, but uh, over the past long time, it's taken a lot longer than I've wanted to. I've kind of been putting it off because it's a lot of paperwork. Um, I'm doing my Eagle project uh, for my, my Troop 404. I'm not with the troop in, in this church. Um, I'm with the church over at Lima United Methodist. Um, I'm doing my Eagle project here because I've just been here my whole life rather than over there where they don't have as much work to be done as, like, as here does. And just I've been here for so long that I wanted to do it here. Um, it's going to be over by the loading dock, a fence to keep people from pulling into the cemetery as people have in the past and gravestones have been knocked over that I've had to upright. Um, but it's, it's a simple fence, it's not gonna be blocking anything in, it's mainly just to keep people from going into that area and like damaging more of the cemetery. Um, and then also a, you know the little free library things? Um, I'm gonna be putting one out in the median area over there. Um, like before the parking lot in that little the little uh, grass area. Um, and yeah, I'm just asking for donations for that to raise money. Um, it's gonna be around $550 for all the material and everything, um, but I'm just asking for donations to, to start off with it, um, just to, to help get that along, because then once the donations start and I get, get up to that cost, I can then start the project and, and get that on underway, so. If there's any, if you have any questions of, to go in <clears throat> in more depth about it after church, uh, I'll be in the narthex. Just ask any questions that you need. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements to make this morning? Mac has something. For those who couldn't hear, we could certainly still use more help for Breakfast with Santa. Please talk to Mac. It would be good if he could know sooner rather than later how many people he's got. If there's nothing else, let's spend a moment centering ourselves in prayer as we come to God in worship.
please rise for the call to worship. Let us praise the God of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we seek God's, God's truth. truth. Let us praise the God of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we seek, seek God's, God's peace. peace. Let us praise the God of love. Hallelujah. In Christ we know God's love, and so we offer our praise. And please turn to the opening hymn found in the back of the bulletin. You take our strife and give us peace. You take our sadness and give us joy. You take our fear and give us courage. You take death and give us new life. O oh God, you give and you give and you give. So we come to praise you and offer our love and loyalty as your willing servants in the name of Christ who enriches our lives with grace and in the power of the Spirit who prays within us when we cannot find the right words to honor you. God, most kind and generous, amen. Till I die, cause there ain't no dying of 
Remembering our need to lean on God's love and mercy, and remembering our need to lean on each other with honesty and openness, let us lift our voices in the prayer of confession, lifting up who we are to God and to each other. Let us pray. Trusting God, you placed your mission in our hands and gave us gifts to accomplish amazing things in Jesus' name. We confess sometimes we've taken credit for what your love has done. Sometimes we've called our own desires your will. Sometimes we've stepped back and let others carry responsibilities. Forgive us when we fail to honor your trust in us. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. So trust God's promise. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and given a new start by God's generous grace. Thanks be to God. Christ's name, we receive the legacy of faithfulness offered to us across many generations. Our gifts continue to build up the inheritance we share in for generations we will never meet, so that they will meet Jesus and reach out to others in his name. And so let us receive our tithes and offerings.
faithful God, we offer humble thanks today for your generosity to us through the church that bears Christ's name. Receive our gifts as tokens of our love and loyalty. Use them to sustain the mission of the church in ways we cannot yet imagine, in a future that you are creating through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And then as you are able, please remain standing and join in singing God who's giving knows no of the bulletin. continue in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are entering into such a busy time of year with so many things to do and things clamoring for our attention. In the midst of it and in the midst of these holidays, help us to still ourselves and quiet our minds and our hearts in this time of worship. Speak to us and help us to hear you. Feed us and help us to be filled. Heal us and set us free to go make a difference in the world in your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first scripture lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day." We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, 
and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God remains forever. And continuing where we left off last week from Matthew 25, this week beginning with verse 14 and ending at 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was mine own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have in an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This too is God's word to us. For a beloved story, that is shared often with our youngest children in Sunday school. It starts out pretty good, but it has a really dark ending, especially when we read it in the way most of us grew up reading it as modern Americans. Like, God gave us talents and expects us to use them for his glory, which is absolutely 100% true and sounds great in this passage for the first two servants. Those who were born with musical ability can use it to help people pray at a whole deeper level than we can pray without music. And those with a special sort of intellectual ability to become doctors can heal us physically. And those with an aptitude for public policy can design and advocate for changes for the greater good for all of us beyond anything any of us can do as individuals. Absolutely. 100% yes. We are called to love God with the wholeness of who we are, and there are many, many ways to live out Jesus' command to love and to care for our neighbors. And the Apostle Paul talks about each one of us being given specific spiritual gifts. And he describes us working together like different parts of a body, all meant to interact together and in unison. But interestingly, even though it's 100% true, Jesus himself never talked in that way that Paul talked. And Jesus never said anything that leads me to believe we can ignore a neighbor's need if we just don't happen to be talented in that area. 
When only the good Samaritan stopped to help the wounded man lying at the side of the road, Jesus didn't say to those religious leaders who passed by, that's totally fine, neither of you have a spiritual gift for wound care. And he didn't say we should feed the hungry only if we happen to be gifted cooks or visit the sick only if we happen to be extra extroverted or to make a joyful noise to God only if we have perfect pitch. Thank goodness. And I don't get the sense that God is particularly interested in whether or not something happens to push us out of our comfort zone where things come easily. Instead, it often seems like God is constantly nudging us to grow in uncomfortable directions, like God is often calling us to step out in faith with no promise that God may indeed also then have an incredible sense of humor on the things God calls us to do where they feel hard to us because we don't have to do them on our own strength or skill. And based on the rest of what Jesus has to say in scripture as a whole, I truly doubt that God will cast a person into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth if they were born with a knack for swimming but choose to become a social worker instead, instead of a lifeguard. Or if they have some athletic ability but use it only recreationally, if they dabble in crochet but make blankets for their grandchildren instead of the homeless. So we use our gifts to God's glory, and as is so often the case with the parables, there's also another layer of meaning underneath that. And I'm not the only person that got a little suspicious that there might be a bigger message from Jesus hiding underneath. Not the only person to think, yes, we should absolutely use our gifts, and maybe there's also more going on here. Maybe we should use our gifts and listen a little longer. In fact, enough scholars got concerned about it that the translators of the NIV removed the word talent from this passage entirely, since the double meaning in English tripped people up and gave us a temptation to look at it too narrowly. So the NIV instead now refers to bags of gold, because Jesus' culture, in Jesus' culture, a talent wasn't a spiritual gift, it was only currency. And a talent wasn't just any unit of currency either. It was the absolute largest unit of currency that they had. I wanted to say that a talent was like the $100 bill of ancient money. But it's just not true because that wouldn't begin to do it justice. Because in our lifetime, many of us will have the opportunity to see and touch and even own possibly a $100 bill at some point. But talents were worth much, much more. So that most average people would never, ever, ever own or touch or see a talent. A talent was a huge amount of money. The note at the bottom of our Pew Bibles says that a single talent, just one, what the lowest level servant in this passage gets, was equal to 15 years of wages for the average person. 15 years. Other academic sources estimate it as more like 20 years. 15 to 20 years of your salary in a single talent. And because ancient currency wasn't standardized by a bank in the way it is for us, its value came from the actual amount of precious metal in the coin. So a single talent was about 75 pounds of silver. So five talents would have been about 375 pounds and 75 to 100 years worth of your wages. Not the sort of thing a person casually carries around in their pocket. A nearly unimaginable fortune for not only the average person, but even many wealthy people. The end of Jesus' earthly ministry, just before his arrest and trial and crucifixion, he taught his disciples, his followers, and then by extension, all of us, how to carry on in this world without his physical presence. He took time to teach all of us how to be his disciples in this time before his return while we're waiting, knowing that it was going to be a long wait 
and that we were going to go through some difficult challenges while we were waiting. As Jesus prepared his disciples to continue without his physical presence, as he taught all of us how to live as his disciples in this time before his return, he offered us this story about a landowner who entrusts an unimaginable, incredible treasure to his servants while he is away, so that even the one who received the least was given a phenomenal fortune, more than he would ever have had on his own. Out of his graciousness, out of how much he valued them, out of a reckless level of generosity, the landowner gave them a level of responsibility and trust and participation they had had no opportunity to earn. And all this time later, here we are, still waiting. We haven't reached the end of the parable when the landowner returns, when Jesus comes back. And goodness knows, sometimes that waiting can be beautiful and good, but sometimes that waiting can be hard. Too many of you in our little family of faith have been going through a really tough time lately. Just waiting a couple of days to get test results back can be excruciating enough. How are we supposed to wait for thousands of years? In these moments, it would be so very nice if Jesus were here with us in that physical way, in the same way he was with his disciples 2,000 years ago. It would be so nice to see him face to face, to witness a miracle or two, to follow him around listening to him and witnessing firsthand how he treated people. To ask him the questions that we long to have answered. And to have him speak a personal word of encouragement and hope, you know, just for you. But instead, we're still waiting, caught between the time when Jesus lived long ago and when Jesus will finally make all things right. When there is so much that we have to take on faith and so many things we can't completely understand. Fortunately, this parable reminds us in its own way that Jesus didn't just abandon us and go off to heaven. He didn't leave us here on our own to make it on our own with our own talents having to sustain us. In the good news of the gospel and the gift of the Holy Spirit, Jesus entrusted you with a great, incredible, miraculous treasure, something greater than you could earn in 75 or 100 years, something you could never purchase, God's own wealth, which is with you and within you, and is bigger than any of our own abilities. To sustain us on this weight and on this journey, God gave us the gift of his own presence within us and within those around us. He gave us the promise of God's love, mercy, abundant life now, and eternal life forever after. He gave us his teachings to provide a path in our personal wildernesses and prayer to experience his presence with us. He made us participants in his mission, turned us into his hands and his feet in the world. And we can take this incredible treasure and we can pretend it doesn't exist. We can act as though it isn't real. We can live as if it doesn't matter or go about our business in the day in and day out of life as if what Jesus did for us doesn't matter or isn't worth anything. It has gone out of style after all. We can take the gift of the good news of the gospel and bury it in the ground and walk away. Or we can hoard it for ourselves, burying it away in another kind of way so that it is ours and ours alone and nobody else can have it and we don't have to share and we don't have to put up with other people as if it's mine and not yours and I have a right to keep it for myself and to keep it from somebody else not sharing God's generosity or kindness or mercy or justice or love with any of the people I encounter in my daily life. And if we bury the good news of the gospel, my worry is that even if we use a talent for whistling, to whistle amazing grace, that that won't be enough for us when Jesus returns. Fortunately, the other two servants show us a better way 
Like the sower in the other parable who generously and foolishly casts the seed of the good news all over the place and finds that some places yield nothing while others produce a huge reward, the other two servants take their incredible treasure out into the world and they use it. And the more they use it, the less they run out, the more they have. And the more they model themselves after their master who put treasure out in the world instead of burying it in the ground, the more it grows and it grows and grows until the master returns and welcomes them home into his glory. In the good times, certainly, but in the hard times, especially, it may be important for us to discover that the more we use our faith, the more faith we find we have. And the more we live out in obedience, Jesus' instructions in the good news of the gospel, the more passion that we will find we have for it. The more that we choose to act like Jesus in the world, even when it is tempting not to, because people, for goodness sake, can be irritating. But the more that we live as he commanded and the more we spread the good news in a way that people can hear and experience as good news, the more of God's treasure we will discover that we have in our own lives. Because he gives us one or two or five, and it can become four or ten or more. And then when our waiting is over, Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in affirming what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And I have a bit of a list today for things to be praying about uh, as we conclude. Uh, First, Happy Thanksgiving, and best wishes for all the ways that you'll be celebrating over the next week. Uh, Prayers for you as you are with family, and prayers for those who have struggles in family, uh, traveling mercies, wherever you're going to be, or whoever's going to come to be with you. Um, But then also prayers for Alfie and his family in the loss of your sister. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. I know she had a long, long struggle. Um, prayers for Virginia, who is missing from her self-assigned seat where she always is week in and week out, um, because unfortunately she's in the hospital and has been for a few days. Hopefully they're getting, um, some better pain management and she'll be out soon. Uh, prayers for Stacy, who's recovering at home after her surgery and then doesn't have another follow-up appointment until after Thanksgiving. The goal is to get to be with family for Thanksgiving, so let's all you know, lift that up as a a prayer. And prayers continuing for Ashley in her cancer struggle as well, as she was supposed to have surgery this week, and then it got postponed, and then it got postponed indefinitely as some worrying test results came back. Um, Really just God needs to be in control of that whole situation. And for her entire family, as they have been hit by far too many things. Prayers for Andy, who came and spoke with us uh, on our book club about mindfulness and and Christian spirituality. She specifically asked that this family of faith pray for her. Um, You know, COVID has kind of gone out of the public eye in some ways now, but she's been sick with it for 11 days and really quite sick enough to have frightened her a little bit, and she asks us to remember her. Doug asks for prayers for his friend Amanda, who's under treatment for a brain tumor, and at this point looks cautiously optimistic that um, the medication is working and stopping the growth. On the other hand, though, Amanda's daughter, Sarah Beth, 
has thyroid cancer, had her thyroid removed, and now they've discovered that it's spread to her lungs. So continued prayers for them, mother and daughter, in the midst of this awful situation. Continued prayers uh, for health and healing for Rita's daughter, Annie, who also had you know, cancer surgery a couple weeks ago. And for Kristen's friend, Christina, who's in the midst of a dangerous and difficult pregnancy. Uh, they successfully had the baby shower and she was out of the hospital for the baby shower, but now they're very much trying to keep that baby in there for 10 more weeks and it's you know, a struggle on if they, can, if they can manage it. So prayers, prayers for all of them and for their medical care as well. I know that was a lot, but is there anything else that people would like to lift up? Yes, Mac. Prayers for Mac's friend, uh, Lou, who was diagnosed with prostate cancer and is going in for surgery. So prayers of joy for Max Aunt Ruth Loomis, who it seems like not that long ago, you know, was just in and out of the hospital and having surgery after surgery and in so much chronic pain that she wasn't sure she could go on. And here she's turned 96 and she's out getting her hair done and going shopping and um, going out to eat and all of the things that were the quality of life she was afraid she wouldn't get back. So that is a fabulous joy. Yeah. Excellent. So an update that Virginia is expected to come home today, but still needs continued healing. It is always better to be in your own bed. Yes, Tom. Oh. Tom's mom is having emergency eye surgery. They've had one thing after another, too. <laughs> uh. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in this week where we pause to remember all the many things that we have to be thankful for, help us to remember that it is true not just this week, but all the weeks of our lives. In the midst of whatever else might be going on, help us always to see your blessings, to feel your presence, to be aware of the goodness that surrounds us, to be thankful for the people who have loved us and that we love in return, to be thankful for safe places to live and food to eat. We thank you for the things that give us purpose in life. We thank you that you have gifted us with spiritual abilities and set us free into the world to use them to your glory and that they help us make us who we are so that we value them in ourselves. We ask for the creativity and the courage to use them well. And then we thank you also for the greater gift of everything that you offer in Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness and the healing and the wholeness abundant life now and eternal life forever. We thank you then for the promise that comes with the resurrection that those that we have lost, we will see again in your time. We pray that this comfort will be particularly powerful for Alfie and his family in the loss of his sister after a long and difficult decline. We pray for healing and encouragement and an easing of pain for all of those who are sick in any way, but in particular, Lord, we lift up those who are known to us and dear to us this morning. We pray for Virginia and for Stacy. We pray for Ashley and Marion and Bill and their entire extended family and all of those who are touched by the anxiety that comes with that situation. We pray for Andy in this illness that has knocked her down more than she anticipated. We pray for Amanda and for Sarah Bath, who is so young, and the struggles that they have with such frightening diagnoses as well. 
We pray for Annie, thankful for the healing she's experienced so far, but asking that you would continue to watch over and heal her and bring her through to a total recovery. We pray for Christina in the midst of her pregnancy, asking that you would enable the baby to stay put in there for another 10 weeks and to be born healthy, and that they would begin this time of their life together really just with joy. We pray for Lou as he adjusts to this new diagnosis and prepares to go in for surgery, asking that you would watch over him in his treatment as well. We pray for Tom's mother going in for emergency eye surgery, asking that she would come through well and that it would be effective and successful. And then, Lord, we thank you for Ruth on the occasion of her birthday, grateful for the healing she has experienced and the increased quality of life, and thankful for the many years that she has enjoyed with her family, asking then for a few good more ahead of her as well. We pray for our family of faith and for each person gathered here and those who were unable to come this morning. We pray for our community, for those who did not have a safe place to sleep last night, for those who are hospitalized or in nursing homes. We pray for our first responders and those serving abroad. We pray for our nation and its leaders. And we pray for our world in this disturbing and dangerous time when so many are in harm's way and we don't know how to solve the problems. So we lay them at your feet, asking for your guidance and your wisdom and your peace. We hand all of these things to you, lifting them up in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then please stand as you are able and join our, our closing hymn soon and very soon, which you can find in the back of the bulletin. Amen. 